Hi, this is David Farkas with Red Dot Forum. Today, I've got the brand new Leica Q2. We're gonna do a quick overview, talk about some of the new features, so stick around. So it's official, the Leica Q2 has now been announced. This morning, they've announced the successor to the original Leica Q, which came out in 2015. And if you know about that camera, it was widely popular because it really just hit all the right notes for a lot of photographers. Full frame sensor paired with a fast 28 millimeter F1.7 lens in a kind of mini M digital body. Just perfect. Everybody loves the Q. And now the Q2 builds on that reputation. This is not so much a revolutionary product as an evolutionary product. And what I like here is that Leica has kept all the things that make the Q amazing, but improved where they can, both in terms of technology, as well as responding to user requests. So since we happen to have one right here, let's walk through it. And I'm gonna go over some of the changes that happened on the outside, as well as some of the significant changes on the inside of the camera. So starting off, We've got the exact same and excellent, no reason to change here, 28 millimeter F1.7 Sumalux Aspheric. This lens is incredible. It's one of the best wide angle lenses that Leica's ever made, and it just happens to be bolted on the front of the queue. The running joke has always been, you pay for the lens and you get the camera for free, which actually has some truth because if you were to buy a 28 millimeter 1.7 M lens that's this good, it would probably cost more than the entire camera lens included. So this always represented a great value and it's part of what made the Q so popular. So I'm really glad to see that they haven't changed that. What they've done though is kind of tweak the design a little bit. So for instance, they've widened the aperture ring and the macro mode ring. If you don't know, the camera actually has this really cool feature where you can change into macro mode and regular mode right there. Likewise, just like a regular M, it has a uh, aperture control. So when you're using that, you can be in aperture priority, or if you're in A, then it's in full automatic. Both of these rings have been widened, the detents have been uh, more pronounced, and the mechanics are just super smooth and fluid now. As good as the original Q was, these feel so much better. But maybe the biggest change is on the inside because we have this gorgeous lens, we need to capture that information. And the 24 megapixel in the Q has done a great job, but now we've got a significant upgrade. We've gone from that sensor to a next generation 47 megapixel full frame CMOS sensor. And it is amazing. Uh, not only do we have almost twice the amount of pixels, just shy actually, but we also have increased dynamic range and better high ISO performance. We haven't done extensive testing, but so far the results at 12,500 just look really, really good on the Q2. So we're gonna do some more extensive testing and post it a little later um, once we get a head-to-head -head of the Q versus the Q2. So you wanna stay tuned for that. Paired up with that sensor to push all those pixels, we've got a brand new newly revised Maestro 2 family processor. So the original Q had a Maestro 2. This is basically a juiced up version of that. And it's able to push through 10 frames per second at full 47 megapixel, which is awesome. Uh, this camera has no lag, it's super responsive. It's also gonna mean that autofocus is also a lot quicker as well, because that's related to the sensor and the processor. So focus, really quick. It's actually a little bit quicker than the original Q, uh, which is really nice to see. We've also got upgrade to the video features. So instead of 1080, we've got full 4K and Cine 4K, and the HD has been upgraded to 120 frames per second for slow-mo. So anyone who's into video is gonna really appreciate that. We also have upgraded connectivity. So the original Q had Wi-Fi, and it can connect to the Leica Photos app. The Q2 takes that further. We now have 
Wi-Fi, next generation Wi-Fi plus Bluetooth LE, which is uh, basically a low power mode. And that allows it to be constantly connected to the app. So as soon as you turn on the camera and the app together, it'll have an instant connection. Unfortunately, we can't test that because the new version of the Photos app isn't coming out till beginning of April. So we're gonna have to wait about a month for that, but promises to be really cool and open up a lot of possibilities for instantly getting photos off of your camera, into your phone, and out into the world. Now on the back of the camera, we've got some noticeable changes here. So the first thing you may notice is we've gone from the five buttons on the Q to the three button interface that we're seeing in the M10 and the CL. And the center button here is an assignable function button, which is really cool, very easy to change. Uh, that's one of my favorite features on the CL, so I like to see that here. Also, you can't really see it, but this is a big change too. Inside the viewfinder, we now have a 3.68 megapixel OLED EVF. The old viewfinder was also 3.68 megapixel, but it was based on LCD technology. This moves up to the OLED, so it's gonna be brighter, clearer, better color, and because the magnification and eye relief have also been improved, just a world of difference for a viewfinder experience. This is a world-class EVF. And when you're talking about a live view camera, the EVF is everything. This is your entire window to the world. So this is phenomenal. I'm really glad to see the upgrade here. The other notable feature is what's next to the viewfinder, which is the diopter adjustment. And it might seem like a kind of a small thing, but this is a really cool innovation. On the original Leica Q, there was a little dial located on the very edge of the viewfinder eye cup. Here, they've moved it off to the side and recessed it flush into the back of the camera. And you can't accidentally change it because, well, you can't actually get a hold of it. So you have to click it by pushing in and the dial pops out. You can give it a turn, go adjust, and then click it back into place. Super ingenious, very little and minor, but I can't tell you how many times on all the different cameras I've used over the years, how many times I've knocked that diopter adjustment out and I can't figure out why my viewfinder is a little bit blurry. So having this be easy to adjust and then lock back into place, really nice innovation there. Moving on to the top of the camera, we have some additional changes. So gone is the little red video button and also gone is the three-way power switch. This is now just a single action on off switch, on and off uh, around the shutter release. And we saw this actually on the QP and also on the CL. So this is kind of making its way to most cameras. They're getting away from the off single and continuous uh, advance around the shutter release. So it's a little cleaner. The shutter speed dials in the same location, but it's been refined just feels amazing, again, with those really positive detents. And the thumb wheel is also revised. They've moved it off to the side, so it's harder to accidentally hit with your thumb while you're shooting. And in the center, we have a assignable function button, just like you have on the CL, which actually is one of my favorite features of the CL. So having the function button on the back and another one on top is really great. So you can customize the camera how you want to use it. And then lastly, let's take a look on the bottom. This is definitely going to look different. So instead of the single card door, we now have a big battery bottom here with a release latch and a separate door. So I'll show you this first. This is our memory card door. So you have to kind of slide it open by pushing down and it will pop up on a spring. Inside, we've got our SD card slot. It is UHS-2 compatible and optimized. These are big files, so you wanna make sure to use the fastest card you can. We actually found with our testing that a UHS-2 card was almost 60% faster in clearing the buffer than a UHS-1 card, which is already really fast, about 90, 95 megasecond. So the camera's capable of using it. Uh, definitely wanna use the faster cards for the best performance. And then here we've got a different battery. If you flip the latch, you'll notice the battery is partially ejected, 
But to do all the way, you do have to give a little tap and the battery will eject. This is a different battery than the previous Q. So the previous Q used a BP DC-12U. This one uses the BP SCL-4. It's not a new battery. This is the same one that Leica uses in the SL, which is gonna give it extra battery capacity for all that uh, bigger sensor, more pixels, more processing power. So this is that extra juice that it needs. The drawback is these do cost a bit more than the old batteries. But if you're using an SL and you're using a Q alongside of it, uh, you'll be able to use the same battery, which is great for travel. Just click and you're ready to go. The only other change is on the side, there's no more cover, which uh, used to flip out and cover a mini HDMI port and a micro USB port. So those ports are now completely gone. Like is depending on you to just use the SD card or the enhanced Wi-Fi capability of the camera. So I'm sad to see them go, especially with the video capabilities. I'd love to have an HDMI port, but we'll have to see how it goes recording to card and uh, see what it looks like. And one last but really important feature, and it's not something that's really evident from just looking at the camera, but this was based on user requests, and in fact, one of the most requested features, the Leica Q2 is fully dust and weather sealed. So this is just as well sealed as the bigger Leica S and Leica SL, which means you could probably practically take a shower with this thing and it's gonna be just fine. It's a great peace of mind if you're traveling, you're doing landscape photography, or just travel in general. You don't have to worry about stashing the camera away if the weather goes south. And this is something that people have really wanted for a long time, and Leica's has done it. The lens is sealed, all the dials, the battery covers, and that's part of why they actually removed some of the, uh, the port access door, for instance, just to make it a lot easier to seal the camera more securely. So, really nice addition. The Leica Q2 is a worthy successor to the original Leica Q. That camera was so popular because it just did everything right. And I think the Q2 is gonna find the same place because it does the same things right, but a little more, right? Right now, the Leica Q2 has the highest resolution sensor of anything in the Leica lineup. It is cutting edge. So at $4,995, Actually, this camera represents a really great value. Phenomenal lens, incredible sensor, the image quality should be out of this world, and it's still in this beautiful, easy to hold, lovely package, and really embodies Leica's mantra of the essentials. There's nothing extraneous on this camera, simple to use, super ergonomic. They've really put a lot of attention, not just into the technical specs, but also into the handling and the operation of the camera. So the Leica Q2 goes on sale starting today for a price of $4,995. If you're interested in placing an order for one, I've got a link right up here or in the description below. Hope you enjoyed the video and found it informative talking about the Q2. If you liked it, please give us a thumbs up. If you wanna see more videos like this, subscribe to the channel. And of course, you can always go to red.forum.com for the latest Leica news, reviews, show reports, technical articles, and more. Until next time, we'll see you in the next video.